What's up guys, Sam here from The Timeline, and today we are beginning our 2021 Free Agent Breakdown series. This was a super popular series last year, so even with all the craziness of the Suns Finals run, I've decided to put in the extra hours over the last couple weeks to develop my own list of guys who I think are the most underrated among this year's free agent crop. And we are starting with a man who is a defensive nightmare. Human pogo stick, a walking highlight reel, I present to you... Nerlens Noel. Noel is a guy who has had an absolutely wild career trajectory, from being taken sixth overall at the very beginning of the process Sixers era, to turning down a $70 million contract offer with the Mavs in 2017 only to almost play himself out of the league, and finally some redemption in the last couple of seasons in playoff runs with OKC and New York. Noel only just turned 27, but he's had all the highs and lows of a 15-year NBA vet, it seems. Now that his play has remained stable for a couple years in a row, teams should feel pretty confident in what he can provide when they come to the negotiating table this summer. And here's what he provides. Noel is the type of defender that fans shell out money to see. There's so much more to NBA defense than steals and blocks, so please don't think that I'm about to make a defensive player of the year case here or anything, but just look at some of the highlights of what this guy is capable of. Noel averaged 1.6 steals and 3.3 blocks per 36 minutes this year, and it felt like every single night his supernatural athleticism took over games. He is among the NBA's elite disruptors. His timing at the rim is impeccable, with athletic hands getting a piece of balls he has no business touching. If he doesn't get you on the first jump, don't worry because he'll get right back up there to take it away on the next attempt. Noel can also frustrate much larger defenders with his spider-like 7-4 wingspan, poking the ball or even stripping it completely to prevent post positioning. Clearly, with that vertical, Noel is an elite rim protector. And the numbers back it up, as he allows just 51% shooting within 6 feet of the rim, 11% below league average. But the really exciting development here, beyond just how fast and high he jumps, is how Nerlens has become a smarter team defender who can stay on the floor longer and be deployed in a number of different ways. Increasingly, we saw the Knicks have success with Noel playing at or even above the level of the screen on defense. How many NBA centers do you think can do this? Blitz a ball handler, swat it away largely by himself, and then create two easy points in transition. Nerlens can gamble like other guys just can't afford to. Even in set plays, he is gifted at taking away space. Here's a Spain pick and roll where we see Nerlens react with enough time to spin off the back screen and tag his man on the roll, and yet also protect the rim from a driving all-star all at once. These are the plays to me that demonstrate how special he can be. It's not just about blocking dunks at the rim, although those are awesome. It's about being put in positions where no human should be able to recover, and yet still recovering. That's what gets me out of my seat with Noel. Now, like I said, Nerlens can be brilliant on this end, but he doesn't come without limitations. With just a 220 pound frame, he still stands to be occasionally abused by heavier centers. The Knicks also played a scheme where they rarely switch ball screens, so we didn't really get to see Nerlens dance with guards on the perimeter and really put his lateral quickness to the test. But I'd argue all of that is just nitpicking. If you're looking for a guy to make a defensive impact in 15 or 20 minutes, this is basically as good as it gets. So what's the catch? It has to be his offense. Nerlens frustrated Knicks fans at times this year as they couldn't help but wonder, how can someone with such gifted hands on one end struggle to simply put the ball in the hoop on the other? And while it's true that Nerlens' offense remains raw, I think the Knicks were not an offensive system designed for him to flourish. Over three quarters of Noel's buckets come assisted. Most of those are at the rim. But without a manipulative pick and roll ball handler, the Knicks struggle to find him open shots. If you go back to the 1920 regular season, Noel posted a 71% true shooting percentage with Chris Paul in OKC. He ranked in the 88th percentile as a pick and roll finisher that year and scored twice as many points as this year on a per minute basis. So clearly the formula isn't that difficult here. Pair a pass first point guard who knows what he's doing with a guy who can jump out of the gym and that offense will be clicking in no time. Going back and watching film from that Thunder season, I particularly loved how much Paul and Noel connected out of double drag, a set where one big sets a screen and pops to the perimeter, while a second screener rolls to the rim. This remains one of Phoenix's favorite sets to this day, so for the Suns fans watching, plugging Noel back into that will feel super natural. But outside of lob catching and cutting, there's not much to analyze about Noel's offensive game. He'll grab offensive rebounds at a solid rate, which you could say is more than either Sharich or Kaminsky do. 
He also technically has a jumper out to 15 feet that he's willing to try, but it's neither pretty nor reliable. Defenses will happily live with Noel attempting mid-range shots all day. I guess if you're a glass half full type, we can at least credit him for having the confidence to try those mid-range shots, but that's not saying much. Overall, Noel is a specialist, and I suspect that he knows that about himself at this point. Every NBA defense is made up of tons of moving parts, but it's safe to say the Knicks wouldn't have sniffed the league's third best defensive rating last year without such a stable back-end anchor. I also think that now that he's been in the playoffs a couple times, teams will start to see his contributions as a little bit more real. As weird as it sounds, Noel is sort of a veteran now, and I could see him making anywhere from just a couple million dollars next season all the way up to the full mid-level exception. That's all for me today, guys. I hope you learned something about Nerland's Noel, and maybe you can tell me what your thoughts are on his fit and value in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video, then please be sure to like it, share it, and of course, subscribe to the channel. Don't forget, this is just the start of our free agency week, so you don't want to miss out on all the upcoming content. We'll have one of these free agent videos hitting your feed every single day. Peace out. Whether you're here for this reason or not, go Suns.